It just seems in almost every arena, um, there's been a bit of a stall, like women rose, but there are still, what, 14 um, women CEOs in the Very Fortune cute. 500. And, you know, if we're half the sky and mm -hmm. more than half the population of our country, you know, even with the number of women senators and House members, it's still relatively small percentage. So what happened? And, you know, how, how can we get it back on track so we can fast forward? Well, you know, that is part of the reason um, that we wanted to do the book, because we know uh, that we can't move forward at the pace we've moved. Um, I think there's been a study that says at the rate that we have uh, women elected to our own Congress, it would take 100 years to, over 100 years to reach parity. And I, I think that's too long to wait to bring those experiences and perspectives uh, and talents to public policy. Uh, you know, you can call it a glass ceiling or a sticky floor, as one of my friends calls it, a thick layer of men. Uh, it's still, <laughs> it's, it's very hard uh, to get through. But in so many places, and, and we try to lay this out, there's a chapter on the unfinished agenda, uh, and we can't cover all the issues, but we are plagued by many challenges still in the United States, as well as uh, women who are even farther behind on the journey uh, in other places. Uh, and it has to do with a, uh, a range of uh, challenges, including culture, including the lack of political will, the lack of power sharing. Um, and that's why I think the evidence-based case makes such a difference. I can tell you from my own experience as ambassador, uh, when I would go and meet with ministers and leaders, so many times I had the sense, oh, they had the ambassador for global women's issues, how nice. Uh, and perfectly cordial and courteous, but usually I got the message there was very little time to talk about these issues, issues which were somehow not the hard power issues, not the issues of the day, uh, and yet so critical to outcomes. But if I would say to that leader, I really wish we could have some time because I'd like to talk about how you can grow your economy or create jobs. All of a sudden, the conversation changed. Uh, and put it in his, usually his, self-interest, uh, there, there was a realization that, well, it's in our own interest, right. whether it's growing economies or uh, creating more profitable companies, whatever our interests are, women are absolutely essential for making that happen. You know, no country can get ahead if it leaves half of its people behind. And similarly, we can't grow our economy and create jobs and have inclusive prosperity if women are not part of, of that solution. I mean, you make the point very forcefully that in having women in all ranks of an organization or a company is smart business. And that I think six that you, you tell many success stories. But where I think, you know, it's taken too much time. Uh, it is absolutely true that this is the right thing to do. It's certainly what inspires and guides, I would dare say, most of us, that fundamentally it's about women's rights. But it is also the smart and strategic thing to do. And a lot of the book focuses on why smart, why strategic, to win over those skeptics so we're not waiting 100 years. Or uh, having to, make to go the, to Jupiter. <laughs> or have to go to Jupiter uh, to, uh, to really uh, move forward in ways that, that critically we need to. And